So I spent um, quite a long time today recording and re-recording and recording over and doing all sorts of stuff to try and get um, this video that I wanted to make across. And uh, anyway, I gave up about 10 times. No, no, not 10 times. Okay, it was about like, what, like four times? Like I would try and then I was like, oh, you know what, this is not coming across well. I'm not going to do it. Da, 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 da. Anyway, basically Gina went um, shopping and I still tried. And when she came back, she bought some stuff to cheer me up. She bought some beer and she bought this giant steak. And this is actually quite a good one. I tried it for the first time last week and they're really nice. So today is the first day of spring and it's absolutely glorious. This is sunset, by the way. It's not, um, you know, I'm not drinking beer and having a steak first thing in the morning. I wish I was though. <laughs> Look how amazing this looks. Jeez. It's going to be my birthday in about two weeks time and that's actually where this entire story began. It was on my birthday, on my 40th birthday, four years ago, that we decided that we were going to quit our jobs, sell our house and we were just going to like do something crazy. We were going to move to Portugal, we were going to try and find a new way to live and that's exactly what we did. We bought this beautiful three and a half hectare farm that's in central Portugal. We've lived here for three and a half years now and uh, I just haven't looked back. Okay, saying that I haven't looked back is kind of a lie. Uh, I do some, you know, sometimes look at the news, I look at what's going on in the UK, and uh, I think to myself, geez, I'm really glad I got out. Um, <laughs> there's some crazy stuff going on there. But I think all over the world at the moment, there's a lot of crazy stuff happening. And uh, yeah, I generally don't really read the news, I don't really watch as much of it as possible, because all it does is make me feel negative and bad. I'd much rather focus on the things that make me happy, like cooking steak, drinking beer, and being in the sun. Gina's got some more things to cheer me up. Salami, ooh, thank you. So, excuse me, let's get this episode kicked off. Let's get this episode kicked off. Hang on a second, that doesn't make any sense. What I meant to say was, let's kick this episode off, let's start, and uh, yeah. The very next day um, so it's not quite the first day of spring anymore it's a little bit overcast actually yesterday was just the most glorious day um, I actually did spend like the whole day recording and um, it just didn't work it just didn't work I mean a lot of people don't realize that there is actually a lot of work that goes into the background of these videos like we don't script anything so everything that we're saying is just you know shot from the hip but um, you know sometimes you put a video together and it just doesn't work it just doesn't I don't know, it just doesn't make sense. And yesterday it was like that. So spring is definitely here. You can see everything has really started to come up. We've got lots of little flowers all over the place. Look at these ones. Got beautiful little purple ones. Got little chamomiles. I mean, it's just looking absolutely gorgeous. A couple of weeks ago, um, Joaquin was out here and he put down some NPK fertilizer. And uh, it's rained a couple of times since then. And you can see it's made a massive difference here. I mean, all of this is just completely shot up. This was a really cold winter that we've come out of. Um, it actually got down to minus six at one point. And that's like exceptionally cold here for Portugal, especially when you don't have like central heating in your house, you know, and you only have like a little wood burning stove. Um, but during those times of the year, um, it was quite dormant here on the farm. Uh, we did have the occasional sort of wild boars visiting and stuff like that. Uh, but now that spring has started, there's just an abundance of like insect life, bird life. I don't know if you can hear them in the background there. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of little mammals coming back and visiting the farm. Badgers, mongoose, uh, foxes, deer. Uh, yeah, just tons of stuff. And it's awesome to see. Last week, we finally planted up these vertigo raised beds. And as you can see, everything's looking quite healthy and green. We also sowed a bunch of grass seed and uh, something 
is eating our grass seed. Have a look at this. We've got a bunch of ants and these ants are stealing all of our grass seeds and they're taking them and burying them underground. And that is just one of the ant colonies that, that are stealing them. We've got another one over here. Although this one doesn't seem to be as active. And I'm pretty sure as I walk around this vegetable garden, I'm just going to find a whole bunch of different ant colonies that are all stealing these seeds. Now, in all honesty, I don't really mind. At the end of the day, you know, the ants are part of the nature here and we like to nurture and help all of the nature around us here. And uh, yeah, think of it as kind of like a land tax, you know. The ants are part of the natural animals here. If they want to eat some of the grass seeds, let them eat some grass seeds. We'll just buy some more. Not the end of the world. The weather is warming up and soon it's going to be time to get our pool ready for the summer season. I can't wait. As you can see, it's a little bit um, stained from the chlorine. Um, but it's not dirty or anything like that. Gina actually did come and tidy it up the other day. So yeah, I can't wait to get that filled. All we need to do is paint it again on the outside. As you can see, all of the paint's looking like it's in pretty bad condition. The reason why we use chlorine in the pool and we don't have a saltwater pool is because we're on a farm and we don't have any municipal uh, drainage or sewage or anything like that. Every pool at some point needs its water to be drained. If we had salt inside the pool, inside the water, imagine all of that salt water would go into the land here and it would start to salt the earth. And if you salt the earth, then nothing's gonna grow in it. And that's why we use a little bit of chlorine just enough so that it keeps the algae at bay. The sun, the UV rays break it down really quickly. It oxidizes and becomes completely harmless. Now we're not gonna be doing um, this pool. We're not gonna be doing it now. It's a little bit too cold still, but we're gonna be setting it up a little bit later on in the spring. Earlier on, I was talking about all of the wildlife that we get on our farm. We've been sent something very cool from this company called Browning. These guys do some of the best trail cams in the world and they've sent us some gifts. Yeah, how exciting. Alright, let's have a look at what's in here. Ooh, mm. there's two. Look at that. Take the little one first. Okay, so this is, um, it's called Strike Force Pro DCI. 26 megapixel pictures, 130 foot night vision. And these things, they basically take um, video and they take uh, photographs. So, and they take 4K. I think it's 4K. It could be 1080p. I'm sure we'll find out in a bit. What's the other one? Oh wow, this one's much bigger. Okay, so this is called the Recon Force Elite HP5. It's bigger, it's got lots of um, infrared lights on it. And this one's full HD. Full HD, okay. So this isn't 4K, but still full HD is pretty amazing and it's 24 megapixel pictures. All right, my glamorous assistant, <laughs> let's open this up. I'm very excited about this. So this thing looks pretty cool. It says it's got a hundred foot IR motion detection. So it's using an infrared beam. And basically what it does is um, it triggers the camera. So it's a 100 foot distance. And then it's got illumination where it can illuminate up to 130 feet. And that's with its night vision. Do you know what this reminds me of? Easter egg wrapping. I feel like I'm gonna open an Easter egg. You're opening an Easter egg, okay. <laughs> that's a very fancy Easter egg. Wow, look at that. It's quite small, huh? Well. Excellent. So yeah, so it's it's basically it's quite small. Um, oh. Wow. Okay. Cool. So we've got a little screen on there. We've got a battery tray and everything. We still got to put some batteries in before we turn it on. We also need to put a memory card in there as well. Uh, it's got a 12 volt port, so you can power this off 12 volts, so that you don't have to use batteries. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. And now let's open up this one. This is very exciting. It's like a birthday prezi. So this one looks kind of similar. I think it's got a slightly bigger screen. Um, it's got an adjustable trigger speed from 0 0.1 seconds to 0 0.7 seconds. Now that's pretty cool because we actually have one of these older cameras and uh, what used to happen was it would trigger and by the time it started recording, the animals were already gone. So this one's going to be a lot quicker. Oh, so this one's bigger. Yeah, okay. So this one's bigger. It takes more batteries, I think. This is six batteries. This is eight batteries. Um, let's have a look. Yeah, it's still got like a similar... Yeah, a very similar layout and it also has a 12 volt port at the bottom. 
These are bigger though, aren't they? Yeah, it's got bigger and brighter LED lights. Actually, I'm not sure. I think this one has six and this one has five. So I think this one actually has a further distance. Okay, so a couple of years ago, we bought this one on Amazon. And uh, as you can see, it looks pretty cool. But if you actually feel it, like the plastic is not as good. It's got little metal clips on the sides to open it up. Um, it's... We actually bought this when we were in England. So yeah, that, well, that's right, yeah. It's lasted us quite a long time, so it's quite old technology now. It is quite old, yeah. But um, the, actual, the actual video, well, like the video quality on this isn't great. No. Um, and like the menu system and everything is very clunky. The other uh, thing is, I noticed, is it makes a noise when it triggers. And I think the triggering, particularly for the wild boar, makes them like run off because oh. they can hear the noise of it like taking the shot. Okay. Another thing as well is that these infrared lights that are in here, um, they actually glow at night time. And when they glow, the animals get a fright. So, um, you know, as soon as it triggers and it switches on at night time, suddenly this thing glows and you can actually watch the animals get a, like, well, like a bit of a fright. I'm not sure if these ones do the, the same. I know that Browning do have cameras where they've got invisible infrared lights and that don't glow. But generally speaking, in order to get that, you'll have some kind of um, covering over the IR lights. And this doesn't have a covering. I've got a feeling that these are going to be very bright infrared lights. This one, interestingly, has two lenses. It looks like it's got a wide angle lens and a narrow field lens. So that is pretty cool. Right now, we only have a memory card and batteries for one of these. Uh, we are going to be getting another one. I've decided that we're going to go for the big one because we had eight batteries, so we might as well do that. That's the Recon Force HP5 Elite. Sounds pretty cool. And uh, yeah, let's get, get this set up somewhere and see if we can capture some animals. We're going to need the strap. Should we take it with us just in case? Good idea. Yeah, cool. So I didn't actually realize, but we had our old um, trail camera for like, it must have been over four years now. Um, but I mean, like the footage that came out of that thing was pretty unusable. I mean, I used to put it into my videos, but obviously I shoot all of my videos in 4K, uh, really high quality. And then obviously when you're putting something like that, it's not even, I mean, I think it was like 720p or something. It was like really about eight times lower re like resolution than what I film in. So it would look all blocky and horrible. Now this is going to be in 1080p, but good quality 1080p can actually stand its, its ground against 4K in some instances. So let's see how good it is. So there are a lot of specs on this camera. The one that interests me the most is the fact that it shoots video. So it shoots 1080p in 30 or 60 frames a second. The video that you're watching right now is shot at uh, 25 frames a second. The reason I do that is because um, the electricity here in this country runs at 50 hertz. If I shoot in 25 frames a second, I don't get flickering lights and stuff like that. Now, if I can slow that video down from 60 frames a second down to 25 frames a second, I can get slow motion, which means that when I capture stuff off this cam, especially if it's an animal that's running fast, I can slow that video down at least 50% and actually see more of what's going on. So at the moment I'm using um, one of my Manfrotto camera tripods. Um, it's got a regular tripod mount actually just in the back here. So you can put any tripod on there. And then on the back of the camera, it's got um, this mounting. So you can basically put that against a tree and then you can have this belt and you can wrap it around a tree. And they also have some kind of a, a tripod that screws into wood. So you can screw it into a tree and then mount the camera on that. Um, but I don't have one of those to show you today. So at the moment, the most action is happening in our bottom field. Um, this is where we're getting lots of piggies and things like that. A couple of months ago, just down here in the corner, we had a big deer running through. Um, and at the bottom over there, we have a mongoose that lives in the bushes over there. So hopefully we can capture some of these animals. I'm quite looking forward to getting um, like a memory card and some batteries for the other one because the other one that they've sent us has got two lenses. I'm not sure exactly how that works yet. So it's got a wide angle lens and then it has a regular lens. Obviously with the wide angle, you're going to be able to capture a lot more of what's happening in the whole scene. And then the regular lens is going to give you like a closer or a narrower shot. So um, this one just has um, a regular lens on it. So we're going to test this one first. And well, obviously we're going to test both of them. We, you know, we're going to have these things set up on our farm for months. And then we're going to be putting a lot of that footage into our videos again. So I can't wait. Every morning when we walk the dogs around here, I have to readjust this bit of fencing because this is where the piggies come crashing through. So sometimes it's facing that way and sometimes it's facing that way, depending on which way their journey is going. So in Portugal, they call these wild boar javali. And uh, they're like a, well, they're like a black pig. And they're not as big as some of the wild boars that you guys um, probably get in America, um, but they are still big enough to cause you some serious problems. I mean, if you, if you run into an adult male, uh, it can kill you. So, 
and it can seriously wound you, can seriously wound your, your dogs. But we've never really had an issue with that because wild boar, they've got amazing um, senses. They've got amazing sense of smell and hearing and they try and avoid people as much as possible. So, you know, unless you're very unlucky and you manage to corner like a mother and its babies or something like that, um, you'll, you'll probably be fine. And then we have another, another hole in the fence here. Gina thinks that this is mainly foxes and they sneak under. Um, so this could be a good location to put the cameras as well. But I think we should go further down to this side over here because we've got a mixture of animals there. These wild boar, they live on the mountains. In the background here we have the Serra da Gardunha, which is in central Portugal. They live up there and then at night time they basically come down and they go through people's farms and they munch all their vegetables and ruin crops and do all sorts of things. Now for us it's not too much of a problem. We've got our dogs, those keep the wild boar away from the main area of the farm. Um, the only area that they do really come down to are like these sort of bottom fields here where they kind of root around and they disturb the ground. We don't grow any crops in this field, we're only growing grass. So we really don't mind them coming here and doing that. But I can understand why the locals get very upset by it, especially if it's ruining crops, knocking over trees and causing them a lot of damage. All right, so this over here is, I don't know if you can see, we've got some wild boar footprints in here and doggy footprints and all sorts of stuff. And then this little sort of furrow going through here is where a, a mongoose lives. It's an Egyptian mongoose and uh, it's quite a cool looking thing. But unfortunately, they love to kill chickens. We had a, a really bad experience where we had about 40 chickens, uh, a beautiful uh, rooster called Nando's, and they all got killed by, I suspect, this mongoose living over here. Uh, he hasn't caused us any more problems again. We have caught him on camera though, so we know that he still exists. So it would be quite nice to see if we can get him with one of these cameras in really good quality. So let's have a look at these footprints quickly. This over here, is one of the wild boars. You can see it's got its two toes that go into the mud like that. And when we did the dog walk yesterday, uh, when I was down here, I swear I saw a mongoose footprint, but now I'm trying to find it. Now oh, this mud's absolutely perfect for preserving all of these footprints. It's those little ones there. Look tiny. Yeah. So that's a strange one. We've got four little nails and some kind of a pad that's dug in. I'm not sure about that. And then over here we have a similar thing going on. Some nails and a little pad. And over here actually we have some interesting ones. Look, where we've got a pad and we've got two nails. So there's definitely some good animals around here. Our doggies love it down here because there's so many interesting sort of smells and little animal trails and things going on and they can really use their noses. We want to cover um, where we know the mongoose goes in and out and then, but we don't just want to be pointing at the bushes. It's not going to be a very pretty picture. So I'm not sure. Maybe what we do is we have the camera go from, from like this side and look in this direction like that. And then hopefully we'll be able to see when he comes in and out of. So like, like this kind of, you're going to get the whole track in. I reckon so, yeah. I mean, this is just the first time that we've set it up. It might not be the right place to put it. Let's give it a go. It seems to be much easier to open than the old one. It's just one clip. You open it, turn it on. Ken's already set it up up in the house, so it's on the settings that he wants it, which I don't know what they are. It's video. I've got it on its highest video setting. And uh, yeah, it's got a delay timer when you turn it on. So it's it's got 30 seconds. So we've got 30 seconds to place it, otherwise it's going to start recording us. Oh, you mean it's not going to get up the nose photography as Ex well? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> And then, uh, yeah, and then you just put it in place and it'll do its job until we come and collect it again. And can you believe it? The very first clip that we recorded that night was of this African genet. It's from Africa. They were introduced to the Iberian Peninsula in the 1700s. And now they're quite common. You find them all over the place. They're a bit smaller than a house cat. They weigh around two kilograms. Our big Maine Coon boy cat's about um, eight and a half kilos. So yeah, not that big. But I'm really impressed that that's the very first thing that we caught on this camera. It's very, very exciting. And I can't wait to capture a lot more animals on the farm and show them to you in these videos. So yeah, this is just a very basic uh, setup of this camera. I'm very excited to get these. Now, um, they gave us these cameras. This isn't a paid advertisement or anything like this. They've just basically sent them to us. There's no strings attached. Um, 
you know, it's just for us to use in our videos. And I've told them that when we use these in our videos, we'll obviously give them a shout and a mention and say that, you know, this is where you can buy these cameras, which I think is fair enough. I mean, these are awesome cameras. I've seen the footage on YouTube, on other YouTube um, videos. And uh, to have something like this on our farm is going to be amazing. When we set the other one up, we'll obviously know these cameras a little bit better and we can give you a lot more info. And something else came today that I'm really excited about. I've wanted one of these for ages and we saved up our pennies and we finally got it because we don't have a sponsor for one of these. It is a tree trimmer because we've got quite a few trees to trim. So our farm was a sheep farm, but they also grow olives here. Now we've got over 100 olive trees here and they are all very much in need of pruning. Just before the winter kicked in, before it got really cold, uh, I pruned around 15 of them, um, each one because they're so bad at the moment. Each one was taking me roughly an hour. Um, and then it got really cold. Um, it, got, well, it started raining a lot and we couldn't do it in the rain. Then we were quite busy with all of our other projects. And then it got really cold. Like at some points it even went down to like minus six. Um, and you can't really prune a tree, make big cuts into it, you know, open up wounds and stuff like that, get a lot of water inside and then get cold. It's really bad for them. So I've been waiting till the springtime to get this done. So I have my work cut out for me because we've got a lot of these trees. <laughs> There's at least 85 left. This is like the main section. And then we got some more trees down there and some more trees in this bottom field over here. Now I can't get stuck into that today because I got to start doing some homework on a really interesting property that I'm going to be filming tomorrow. It's actually a public video for our channel. Um, it's a, a large horse farm. It's also a hotel. It's right near Lisbon. It's right on the Tagus River. It's got a huge asking price. But, um, you know, I like to film a lot of varied properties all the way from like little ruins and stuff like that, all the way up to like multi-million pound properties and things like that. I know you guys at home find those things interesting. Even if you don't have the money to buy them, sometimes it's really cool to have a look around like a big hotel or something like that. So yeah, I'm going to uh, cut this short and uh, do my homework and get ready for that video. And we'll see you next week, same time for another episode of Portugal Farm Life. I hope you're all having an awesome time at home. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, let us know what you think in the comments. Please hit that subscribe button and that like button. Come and support our channel and uh, help us make these videos. We'll see you next time. Ciao.